So the Mars Exploration Rover Spirit and Opportunity really became that next step. We wanted to follow the water. We wanted to understand the role of water in shaping the landscape of Mars. Spirit and Opportunity visit ancient riverbeds for the first close-up look at what water left behind, this time with hands-on tools. These guys are about the size of a golf cart at this point, and so they're bigger. Um, they're built as sort of field geologists, robotic field geologists on Mars. Both rovers roll for miles, and the alien landscape starts looking familiar. And we started seeing rocks that had ripple marks formed in them. Ripple marks, much like you might see in a riverbed, where the water is flowing and transporting sand across the surface. You know, you can walk out your door and go to the local pond and see those same kinds of features. The mission rolls beyond expectations and seems to have a bit of luck. When a wheel fails, Spirit accidentally scrapes up a layer of the red sand, revealing white. So this bright white material that turns out to be almost pure silica uh, tells us that it was probably precipitated from relatively hot water in a volcanic area. Then Spirit stumbles upon another wild discovery. It beams home a series of images that could pass for Oklahoma. Dust devils, direct evidence of Martian wind. Then a Mars orbiter captures a dust devil rising a half mile high, casting a shadow across the landscape. We know that on Earth, wind can be a shape shifter. Smithsonian's Mariah Baker is an expert at recognizing its handiwork. When you go to a desert or a beach like this, you can see that wind is constantly sculpting the landscape. When wind blows over a sandy surface, it can cause ripples to form, or dunes like these. On Mars, wind does exactly the same thing. In fact, it's been the dominant geologic force for billions of years since all the water dried up. Researchers like me can go to some of the most Mars-like places on Earth, like the Great Sand Dunes in Colorado and the Atacama Desert in Chile, to understand how surface features form on Mars. But at some point, the similarities break down and the mysteries begin. So in this dune, we can see what are known as impact ripples, which are the smallest surface features formed by wind. The smallest impact ripples that we see are formed in fine sand, but larger coarse sand forms these larger wavelength ripples. And when we arrived at Mars and we saw that these large ripples were also forming in just fine material, we realized that we didn't quite understand how they form entirely. This is where Mars gets alien. On Mars, we've got about a third of the gravity that we have here on Earth, which makes sand a little bit easier to move. However, we also have an atmosphere that's about 100 times less dense than the atmosphere here on Earth, which means that a 40 mile per hour wind might feel like just a breeze on our skin. And so we need much higher wind speeds to actually move sand on the surface. But somehow, Martian winds can still whip the entire planet into a frenzy. Every year, Mars throws a few dust storms that last for weeks, but stay local. On occasion, one of them goes global. When you have these occasional global dust storms, it can basically kick up dust into the entire atmosphere. It completely obscures the surface. In 2018, the sharp features of Mars disappear in just a few months as a thick red cloud envelops the planet. The rover Opportunity is now almost 15 years old and has driven more than 28 miles. But a big storm is coming. Looking down, it sees dust accumulating on its solar panels. Looking up, it sees less and less. And suddenly, the sky literally darkens over the course of a period of just a few short days. And the last image we have looking towards the sun from Opportunity effectively shows us in being in darkness. <laughs> 